Hi everyone, this is Germinal Van. Glad to see you. Today I'm about to present to you guys a new book that was published on September 26. It is my first co-authored book, my 15th personally, but my first co-authored. And it is entitled The African Nobel Prize, A Driver for Development. So I wrote this book with a dear friend, a colleague, but he is a friend. I know Jean-Philippe Sika Ado for a very long time. Uh, we both went to high school back in Abidjan, Cote d'Ivoire. So we wrote this book together. We, it was a tremendous intellectual effort that we both um, provided, we both produced to, um, to, the completion, to the completion of this, of this work. But what I want to talk to you guys about in this book is what led us to write it, what method we use to write it, and uh, why you should buy it, pretty much. So everything started in March. March 2020, COVID started being COVID, pretty much. So Jean-Philippe and I, we were calling each other re like, like, like regularly. We usually talk about geopolitics, political philosophy, political theory, and um, but that call, I start ranting a little bit about the lack of representation of African intellectuals in the Nobel Prize. To me, it didn't make sense. I think I I won't say I would not use the word unjust. I will use the word inadequate. I found it inadequate that there were there is almost no. African scientist or intellectual who has won the Nobel Prize, at least in the scientific categories. Of course, there have been many um, uh, Africans who won the Nobel Prize, but the Nobel Prize for peace. I'm not saying that peace is, is irrelevant. Of course, it is relevant. But the way I perceived that was Africans do not contribute enough to the advancement of knowledge, of scientific knowledge. They do not contribute enough to the advancement of mankind. But, I mean, that's a message I perceived. Maybe I perceived it wrong, but that's how I perceived. But to me, it did not make sense. I know that there are plenty of scientists, African scientists and African intellectuals, who have done significant contributions to the advancement of mankind and to the advancement of human knowledge. And yet they, they are not recognized. So I found that really inadequate. So I was complaining to Jean-Philippe about all of that a little bit. And then Jean-Philippe was like, why don't we write a book about it? I was like, that's a great idea. And plus it would be awesome to work with someone, something I've never done before. So. We didn't plan that. It, it was spontaneous. But we carefully planned the structure of the book. Jean-Philippe uh, basically focused on the logical reasoning and the legal approach of our analysis. And I focused more on the scientific, mathematical, statistical approach of the book. But it is important to understand that we did not write this book from a complaint a complaining or a romantic approach. We use the scientific method. In fact, we combined uh, the use of historical analysis with statistical techniques in order to give uh, validity to, to our hypothesis. We use econometric methods such as the, linear the simple linear regression and the multiple linear regression to give empirical content to our hypothesis. We wanted the reader to understand that this book wasn't written just as a romantic, as a normative uh, analysis of a potential or a prospective uh, intellectual prize for the African continent. So we wanted to give to the African people something substantial, something substantive, something that they can act, something that is quite tangible. That's why we decided to write this book. But what makes this book special is the fact that it is path-breaking. And uh, there are two reasons for that. The first reason is that we, 
Jean Philippe and I, we've done our research. We don't want to say. I don't want to say that no one ever proposed this idea. That's not true. We we're sure that some pre, some people did bring the idea of creating a continental prize, a continental intellectual prize. But we've done substantial research to see if there was actually people who materialized this idea, and we didn't find any. At least on our side, we didn't find any. So. Jean-Philippe and I are, so far, to my knowledge, the first to have actually materialized the idea of creating an African intellectual prize that will give visibility to African people, but also it will create a long-term goal. What is that long-term goal? Is a social development, social, develop, social and economic development for the African people. Because it is fair to say that the Nobel Prize in itself has played a significant role in the development of American and Western society, generally speaking. So, yes, it is, it is important. Of course, what kind of development has played? Not a direct development, but the fact that someone has won the Nobel Prize, that person's influence has had a direct impact on policy making. Let me, for instance, give you an example. Uh, let me give you the example of Ivan Pavlov. Ivan Pavlov was a Russian um, physiologist who developed the method of the classical condition. And the classical condition is important because it, it deals with psychology. It enables us to predict how people will react to certain images or to um, to a certain action. It, it creates it creates a stimulus into people. So we use that we use the Pavlovian theory in medicine, in the medical field generally speaking, but also in economics. Economists use that to determine consumer behavior with advertising. That's why it's important. But the question here is, if Ivan Pavlov didn't win the Nobel Prize in physiology and medicine in, in 1904. Would his theory have the same effect that it has today? Maybe yes, but not to the same extent. What I'm trying to say is that the Nobel Prize has given a considerable uh, platform to Ivan Pavlov to spread out his theory. And on, but what is interesting is that at the time he won the, the Nobel Prize, the, the means of communication were significantly restrained. Uh, TV did not exist then. Uh, radio, I don't think it existed at the time. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. But the means of communication were significantly restricted. But over time, because he won the Nobel Prize with the, with the development of the means of communication and, the, the, and technological progress, the, ad, the advertisement of Nobel accomplishment has become a significant tool of promotion. That's why today the classical condition is one of the most unrefutable theory of mankind when it comes to uh, human psychology. So here we see that the Nobel Prize has played a role in advancing society, but it is, of course, indirect, but still. And that's what we want to do also for the African Prize. We want to do the same. We believe that the African Prize is going to uh, promote social development for the African people. Because it is important to understand that in this book, what we mainly promote is the use of science and education. So when I ran the regressions, I tried to demonstrate two things. First, that, liter that uh, societies that have a higher literacy rate do have also a higher human development index. Because literacy rate is important. Without, uh, without literacy rate, you cannot do science. You simply cannot be really educated. You need to know how to read, write, and count. 
and there are a lot of countries in Africa that have a uh, a literacy rate that is below 50 percent Jean-Philippe said in his video yesterday like countries like Cote d'Ivoire Mali um, Ethiopia Burkina Faso they it, it, it's it's that's not good like a, a country where half of its population doesn't know how to rewrite and count it's problematic you cannot develop yourself if you do not have access to science you cannot develop yourself if you do not have access to education you cannot develop yourself simply if you do not have access to the basic elements of getting educated simple as that so we want to stimulate at the african intelligentsia we want to stimulate african government and african people generally speaking to start veering towards intellectual activities because it's intellectual activities that has helped the west and far east asian countries to develop themselves once again i've been using china as one of the best examples of human development or japan japan for instance doesn't have any natural resources the only natural resource that japan has is fish but why Japan is among the most advanced countries on earth? Because the Japanese people focus on education. Without education, Japan would not have the level of economic, social, and political development it has today. So we believe that the African Intellectual Prize could indeed portray that uh, factor of social and economic development. Our book is divided, in, no, it's not divided. It contains eight chapters. The, it, it contains eight chapters and it is divided indeed in three parts. Uh, the two first parts of the book deals more with the history of the Nobel Prize itself, why the Nobel Prize is so significant. And Jean-Philippe and I have made a critical analysis of the Nobel Prize saying why the Nobel Prize is unique. But the, criti the criticism we gave, it's a, uh, it's, it's a critical analysis. We understood why it is significant, but also we expressed the flaws that this prize contains, especially when it comes to the Nobel Prize of Economics to um, award someone and saying that he's the best economist suggests that he has a uh, superior intelligence to his to his fellow economists and a field like economics like Hayek said you cannot bestow someone and saying that he knows more than anybody else because to win the Nobel Prize it's it's a huge responsibility once you win that you you your life is no longer the same people view you as like the god of your field although to me, a Nobel laureate is no more intelligent than his peers. In fact, it is, his, it is his peers that selected him, that at least proposed him or nominated him for the prize. So it is important that to understand that a prize like the Nobel Prize uh, has its flaws. And that's why we explain in the book. And we talk about the impact of the Nobel Prize. And the, and the third part of the book, we now explain why we need an African intellectual prize uh, for the African continent, pretty much. And uh, we explain that our prize will contain pretty much nine categories. So the six categories of the Nobel Prize plus three other categories that I will not mention, you will have to find out in the book whether you get the uh, the paperback version or the ebook version, you have to find out in the book. But we want our prize to contain nine categories and we develop a conceptual, a conceptual framework in which we structured uh, the prize, where it will take place, how the nominees will be selected and under what conditions they will be selected. And what makes our prize significantly different this is the only clue i'm giving here is that instead of simply relying or rewarding professors we want to give it to professors and independent researchers jean-philippe and i believe that this book will have 
can and will have an impact, but it needs to fall in the right hands. So I want all of you guys to share this video. I want all of you guys to spread the word. I want all of you guys to, to talk to your friends or to people you know that are in a position of influence. That there are two guys here who are proposing something bold for the African continent. Something that has not been done before. It is important. And once again, I repeat, as I said at the beginning of this video, this book was not written from a normative approach. We wrote this book from a cold, scientific, positive approach to explain why our theory is a feasible and applicable theory. Anybody who reads this, can indeed see that we have all the empirical evidence to demonstrate that our theory is not just valid, but it is applicable. I insist on that. So this book, The African Nobel Prize, A Driver for Development, is groundbreaking, it is promising, and I highly, highly recommend you guys to get your copy on Amazon. It is as paperback and ebook. So you guys can get it. I will post the link uh, below this video so you guys can simply go to Amazon directly and get your copy. But read this book, share, share it with your friend, talk to anybody about it. We have to spread the word. We have to help the continent recognize his people, especially the intellectual. The African int intelligentsia has been marginalized. It is important that the African intellectuals demonstrate once again their value. It is important for African intellectuals to once again bring back the pursuit of knowledge, bring back the pursuit of science, bring back the pursuit of education. This is how we will be able to develop our continent. We cannot develop the African continent without education. It is crystal clear. We cannot develop the continent without science. We need this. And we believe that in this book, the conceptual, the conceptual framework of this book can help, indeed, African people to raise the bar again. It can help African people to focus on education and to focus on intellectual activities, generally speaking. So this is why Jean-Philippe and I, we wrote this book. Because we believe that it is possible and we demonstrate that it is possible. We just need to apply it. We just need people in position of power to apply this hypothesis that we demonstrate. And then time will tell if it is worth it or not. But we believe that it is worth it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening to us. Thank you very much for the support. I want to thank all my followers on Instagram who have supported my work from day one thank you guys very much for the support i am entirely grateful to you all and uh please grab your copy on amazon uh let us know what you think write us a review give us your feedback and see how we can improve our work and also increase the debate so thank you very much everyone and may god bless you all